curious people. Today I am very pleased to introduce you to the last part of 19th century insane asylums nightmare, and I want to thank you for continuing to watch this channel. And if you like what we do here, please subscribe, it's a huge help for us. Insane asylums were once seen as symbols of progress for people with mental health issues. But by the 19th and 20th centuries, these institutions had become overcrowded torture chambers. West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum, a place for insane paupers. Before it was rebranded as the Stanley Royd Hospital, and subsequently closed in 1995, this facility located in Wakefield, West Yorkshire, was known as the West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum. It was founded in 1818, and was among the first state-run asylums built to serve the insane poor in the UK. Like many other insane asylums of its kind, the West Riding Asylum was meant to provide people diagnosed with mental illnesses with new and improved care. The hospital was completely self-sufficient with its own dairy, butchery, bakery, shop, garden, farm, and laundry. The hospital also hosted outdoor picnics and other activities for patients. The terrible suffering of the patients at the asylum was chronicled in the 2015 book Proper People, Early Asylum Life in the Words of Those Who Were There. It was written by acupuncturist David Scrimgeer, who studied letters, annual notes, reports, and other materials from the hospital's archives to bring the lives of its former patients to the forefront. The stunning accounts in the book offer a glimpse into life at these insane asylums and a holistic understanding of those who were committed there. The West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum was meant to serve 150 patients, but by 1844, there were 433 patients, all of them paupers. The hospital was later the site of many deadly outbreaks. A cholera outbreak in 1849 killed 106 of the 620 total of patients, while a major salmonella outbreak more than one and a half centuries later led to the deaths of 14 psychogeriatric patients and the infection of nearly 400 others. In 1948, a report by a medical officer to the newly formed Leeds Regional Hospital Board on the West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum described the abysmal environment. The old gal-like buildings at Wakefield are gloomy and depressing, and the galleries where many patients aimlessly spend so much of their time are deficient in natural lighting. The accommodation can best be described as austerely pre-Dickensian, falling far short of usually acceptable standards. The hospital was later closed in 1995. The hospital's abandoned yet impressive property, however, attracted developers. It was subsequently bought by developers and is, today, known as Parklands Manor. Cleveland Asylum for the Insane, the deteriorating mental facility exposed by the press, twice. The Cleveland Asylum for the Insane, located on Turney Road in what is now Cleveland, was known by many names, Northern Ohio Lunatic Asylum, Turney Tech, and the Newburgh Asylum. But its many names were preceded by its notorious reputation. It was first built on land donated by the family of President James Garfield, and its construction was completed in 1855. At the time, a number of state hospitals were created across the United States specifically to care patients who had mental health conditions. They were born under the philosophy of Thomas Kirkbride, who advocated for more holistic types of treatments such as open air and sunlight. The asylum's prominent facade was designed with the Kirkbride-style philosophy in mind. The main building had wings to the left and right, which branched out across many acres of land. A spacious environment and open architecture were key. At first, patients were served well, and there were close relationships between them and the hospital's small staff. But conditions and treatments at the facility worsened as it began to get flooded by patients, many of whom wouldn't be considered mentally ill by today's medical standards. In 1872, a fire destroyed the Cleveland Asylum for the Insane. During rebuilding, the poor conditions inside the hospital came to light, and no improvements were implemented. The hospital's deterioration had been the subject of speculation among the public, especially advocates who were working to reform such cruel mental health institutions. The Cleveland Asylum for the Insane became the target of two separate undercover investigations by local reporters, similar to Nellie Bly's inside reporting. 
The first was carried out by newspaper reporter Al Astro, who went undercover as a newly hired aide. The malpractice was apparent from the get-go, Astro, who had little experience, and gave vague work references was easily hired, quickly saw the indiscriminate hiring policy. He described witnessing a facility that was overrun by patients who desperately needed help, yet were neglected by a small staff that was woefully untrained to manage their care. He wrote his findings in an article, titled Whose Fault Is This? Four years later in 1955, reporter Bus Bergen admitted himself as a patient under the pseudonym Howard Berger. During his time at the asylum, Bergen witnessed conditions that were more akin to a prison than a hospital. He was forced to share cramped quarters with hundreds of other patients, watching patients get involved in physical fights or slowly lose their minds with no activities for their recovery. The hospital later rebranded as the Cleveland State Hospital, and its care services began to improve dramatically in the 20th century. In 1975, it was turned into the Cleveland Development Center, a short-lived care center for patients with autism. But the building was entirely demolished two years later as the movement to institutionalize medical care gained momentum following more awareness about the injustices perpetrated at such facilities. Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum, London's Forgotten Fire Disaster The Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum, later known as the Freerin Hospital, was among a handful of mental health hospitals built in what would become the greater area of London in the 19th century. It was designed by Samuel Docks with the guidance of John Connolly, the superintendent of Hanwell Asylum, with an Italian architectural style in mind. The expansive building had six-mile-long corridors that stretched over 119 acres of land. Insane asylums were novelties during that period, so its opening received much attention. The first foundation stone was laid in May 1849 by Prince Albert, and the total cost of the facility's construction totaled nearly £400,000 or half a million dollars. Indeed, it was the largest of the early asylums built in Europe at the time. The hospital officially opened on July 17, 1851, and quickly housed its maximum total of 1,000 patients. But as mental health hospitals across the UK became overcrowded by the growing demand for treatment, so too was the Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum. Even after undergoing design expansions to bring its occupancy up to 2,000, the facility was still flooded with too many patients. By the 1860s, the facility had become so overrun that it had to break its original anti-restraint ethos. Overwhelmed staff began putting their most challenging mental health patients in restraints and care at the facility subsequently declined. At its peak, the hospital housed over 3,000 patients. As if the subpar conditions weren't enough to contend with, the asylum was hit by a major fire on January 27, 1903. The wooden wards caused the fire to quickly spread across the facility as cramped conditions contributed to the horrific deaths of many of the patients inside. As the Boston Evening Transcript put it, some of the lunatics were burned in their beds, and the charred remains of others were found huddled together in corners, while groups of partially consumed bodies on the side of the corridors showed that many persons lost their lives and sacrificed those of others in their frantic efforts to force a passage through the flames to the main building. The Hornsey Fire Brigade was the first to respond to the call. They dammed a brook by the bottom of the slope, which was about 400 yards from the fire. But the fire was too strong to contain. The flames killed 52 people inside the hospital, all of the victims were women. The extent of the tragedy cemented it as one of the worst peacetime fires in London's history. After the fire, the Colney Hatch Asylum was renamed the Freerin Hospital. It continued to serve patients with psychiatric conditions until it closed in 1993. The empty property was later purchased by developers and converted into luxury apartments called Princess Park Manor, a popular residence for Britain's rich and famous. Still, no matter how hard they may try to bury it, the asylum's history will continue to live on through those who know its story. This is the end, and that's how we spent another 10 minutes together. Now if you want to get others to find out what we are doing here, I'll tell you very honestly, a share will not only help, but will also be greatly appreciated. If you want to be sure that you don't miss anything, 
Of course, only if I convinced you that it's worth it, it would help me to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you.